Welcome back to Unlocked. I'm so excited because we have Janet Kramer on. Welcome. Hi. I'm so excited. Okay, we've been trying to get you on forever. Uh, Ditto. I've been trying to have you on my show too. Hey, we're going to. Okay, all right. I'm excited. Yeah, thank you for having me. No, of course. And congratulations on the baby. Thanks, thanks. I'm so excited for you. I, yeah, it's, I'm, um, I (laughs) would, my therapist, actually, my therapist, I was (laughs) talking about her, but whenever, I think it was last session, she goes, would you have ever been able to just say, okay, from, because I was showing her a photo of something in my camera. She's like, a year later that you're going to be pregnant, you're going to be like, no, like none, none of the above. None of the I above. I would have been like, absolutely not. That's for someone else. Did you think you were finished having kids? Oh, 1 million percent. So it was like total freak. Well, no. No? So when I was dating again, post-divorce, people would ask and I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like, I've had my two, I'm almost 40. Like I've had multiple (laughs) miscarriages. Like it's, it's done for me. And then when I met Alan and he asked me, I was like, I don't know, like maybe I'm not done. And there was something that we, for us, I thought it would kind of be cool to create something together. Mm -hmm. But. Well, I feel like when you meet like the right person yeah you want a piece of them yeah it, and like a oh like yeah and, and so, it almost feels like i don't know like i i would yeah i'd love to create something with him and like have like something that's ours yeah and i think i would have always regretted if we didn't try mm-hmm. so when we had talked about it and my, all my girlfriends were like i knew you were gonna have another one i'm like really like because i just was like nope i'm done no more but i think it was because i was so afraid of losing again mm-hmm. and then or failing again and so with him, I basically was like, all right, I probably won't be able to, I can get pregnant. I just can't keep a pregnancy yeah. minus the two that I had um, when those were IV after IVF and doing lots of shots and stuff. So I told him, I was like, I don't know if I want to go through the pain of losing again, because then that just is going to just send me on like a whole like tailspin yeah. and then I'll feel bad. And, and then I said, I don't really know if I want to go past 40. So but I was like, well, let's just maybe give it this year and just see what happens. And it was the first month, no medicine, no nothing. I wasn't even like, I tried the ovulation sticks, but it said I wasn't ovulating. I was like, I think I'm already in menopause because I'm not <laughs> ovulating at all. And then it was like pregnant. That's month. amazing. Mm-hmm. So now to backtrack a little bit, though, yeah. for people that don't know your story, I feel like you've had like years <laughs> of just I've crap. Had. And like, I feel like I'm like, okay, when is going to be like, when is there light at the end of the rainbow? You know? Yeah. But so starting back, because how long has it been? I mean, how old's Jolie now? Jolie is going to be eight in January. No way. So, because I remember <laughs> coming over to your house, it was like right when everything had gone down, I think. And Jolie was little. I just remember sitting there playing with her in her bedroom Mm. on the floor. And it was right when you had gone through everything. And I think it was, and you've spoken about it before, just like destroying all your ex's stuff, Mm -hmm. like his, (laughs) his wedding tux, everything, just destroying it. And I think it was right around that time. Yeah. I went a little crazy. I destroyed everything. I mean, every photo. It was <laughs> like when my daughter would nap, I would just take everything into the garage and just start like I'd ha- I hammered like all of his Xboxes and shattered all our photos. And okay. was, I went like white girl crazy. And how long were you all together? Total seven years. Okay. Total mm-hmm. seven years. Yeah. And then obviously you've got a new book coming out. What was yes. your first book titled? The Good Fight. Okay. Yes. The and it was a, and it was a good I mean we really fought hard to keep mm-hmm. our marriage together. I just think it was um I think he knew that he was so in a hole that he couldn't get out. Mm-hmm. That I don't think we could have ever repaired our marriage together. I think I still believe that people can work through infidelity in a marriage. And we both believe that, but I don't think we would have been able to ever come back from the amount of uh, rediscoveries that we had in our marriage. Yeah. Like it was just because it just the kept, trust it was, was blow just after blow. yeah. I mean, we we had no foundation, we had no blocks to to build from. I mean, it was just a constant uh, destruction of 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 you know pain and um, toxicity. And so it was like, and then I just became the absolute worst version of myself. I just became so controlling, and I wrote about it in my book, like mm-hmm. how I just I was gripping on so tight because I didn't want to let go of my family. And so, you know, he felt controlled and, uh, it was just, it was a, just a bad, 
bad time. Yeah. Well, because when you feel like you're on the way to repairing and then something else happens and then something else happens, yeah. I think you spoke about that pretty heavily on like you had a lot of hope and then something else would happen mm-hmm. and it would break everything apart. Yeah. So I'm like, well, how can you say this? And then, and then we have, we had all the tools, right? And yeah. so it's just two people have to be willing to, mm-hmm. to do the work. And I think it's really hard when someone, you know, especially mostly the perpetrator is like, just get over it. And it's like, well, we can't just get over it. And he's like, well, how long are you going to be talking about? Like, well, it just happened four months ago. So you're going to have to give me a little bit of grace yeah. to go, okay, I might be a little worried when, you know, someone randomly texts you and, or mm-hmm. I see something. So, yeah. And so when was the moment that you were finally like, okay, this is it. And when was that time in comparison to when the world found out about it? Sure. So everything was pretty instant. Um, it was, the, the last go around, I just knew um, something had happened again. And I was just like, I cannot go through it again. And everyone always said, you're gonna have your breaking point. But I'm like, all right, I've had six years of destruction and, and you know rugs being pulled from me or new discoveries. And so it was truly that moment where I was just like, the pain of staying is worse than leaving. Like I mm. have to get out. And cause it's, it's just, it's not changing. And this will be my life for the rest of my life if I don't get out right now. So I, you know, I write about in the book what I found. Um, and is that in the first book or the second? Second. That's, okay, that's yeah, about yeah. to come out. Yeah, that's that was the one where I finally was just like, it's time to wake up because it, it happened again. This is what I found, and it was within a week is when I uh, filed and and mm. then let and for me too. And I wrote about this where I said. I had to put it out there sooner than later because I knew for me, I would go back. And it, you had to, in I, a way, be held accountable yeah. because I would you, look like an idiot once again if I, you know, something came out and then I took him back. I'm like, I have to, like, I have to put this out there because I need everyone else to hold me accountable to be done because mm. I don't want to look like a fool yet again. Why do you think you kept going back? My kids. My kids are my whole entire world. And I, it's, it's very unfair when someone's actions can dictate your life and mm. the rest of, or end your family. So, I mean, to this day, it's still hard saying bye to my kids. That's not a normal thing. That's not something I, dream, I dreamt about as a little girl. You know, yeah. I come from a divorced family. I never wanted to be, I never wanted kids in a divorced family. Yeah. So for me, it was one of those things where I didn't want to have to separate holidays I didn't want my daughter to be raised by somebody else so Mm. the first time that I found out she was really little and I was just like I don't want her to know anybody else as mom and because I'm her mother I know every inch of her I know every part of her um she came from me yeah and so it was like this mama bear protection and I also wanted to be able to say I did absolutely everything I could do yeah to to save this marriage and for to sure. fight for you and for the kids. But at the end of the day, it was something where they it was not a healthy household for them to be in. That's what I was going to ask, because obviously you hear all these stories of separation and kids mm-hmm. involved. And I feel like I've always had the mindset of like, if that were, and it's so easy for me to say, because I'm not in that position, but like, mm-hmm. I have friends who have gone through the divorce and I tell them all the time, I'm like, but wouldn't you rather your kids see you so happy Mm -hmm. and in love and a healthy relationship than for them to base their opinions off of an unhealthy relationship? 1000%. Yeah. And I think like, again, I grew up in that kind of toxicity as a kid. My parents didn't divorce until I was 13, 14. So I wish I didn't see the stuff that I saw because I think that's why I stayed for so long and Mm. my my last marriage was because I'm like well this is what you do you stay and you fight through it but I wish my parents actually divorced sooner so that I didn't have to witness like I would have loved to have seen like how my fiance is now I mean he's so sweet he'll be like guys your mommy is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen I love her so much and just gives me so much love and affection I'm like I don't think my kids ever saw Mike ever give me a hug or a kiss in front of them you know so Mm. it's like it just to let Alan model how, you know, a husband is supposed to be around their and how they're supposed to treat their mother. It's like, that's what my kids should be seeing. That's what they, that's what the house should be filled with. And so how early on did they meet Alan? I think it was three months. Okay. Yeah. At the three month mark. Okay. And how did they adjust to that? Well, he was still living in England. So a lot of it, it started just as FaceTime calls. Yeah. Like this is mommy's friend. 
And then like <laughs> exactly. with Jolie, I'm like, mommy has a crush, you know? So we yeah. kind of did it like that. And then uh, it was when Jolie was ready. I always put everything kind of, I was like, hey, Jolie, when you when you feel comfortable and you want like to meet mommy's friend, you just like let me know. And so, Aww. yeah. So she's like, I want to meet him. And I'm like, okay. So then he flew over and then, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it was great. That is awesome. And it's just so fun now to see. I mean, Jace, I mean, they just, they love him so much. And and it's great. My ex and him get along really well too. So everyone just gets along really well. And that is amazing. Yeah. Because rarely do you have that. Right. But I also think it's because that's what I want to create. Right. Yeah. So it's like I could, I could hate my ex for the rest of my life and I could be the most bitter, angry woman with him given the history and what he did to like my family and our family because yeah, I feel like you as a person you could forgive him for what he did to you but when it comes to what he's done to the kids and breaking apart a family I think that's probably where you struggle most I struggle there I struggle with the financial piece of things obviously there's still a little like angry I still get a little rubbed when I like have to pay child support like those kind of things well, like kind of yeah. rub me because I'm like Wait, because of your, your what you did, I how like so it's like which that I have is to crazy just swallow, to me. Like that is crazy to me because I know like in certain states, if there's infidelity, you don't. Yeah, Tennessee doesn't care. Really? No, it's a no fault with that. But that yeah, it's crazy. But having said all that, it's one of those things again where I don't want to carry that hate, and I don't want my kids like I just want my kids to see us all really happy, and in 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 all reality. I kind of look at my life now and I'm like, thank you for what you did because I've mm. I've now get to experience what a beautiful love looks like and what a beautiful like how how it's supposed to look. That's so amazing. It's in a weird way I'm like thank like I'm I'm still sad that you know certain times saying goodbye to the kids and thank you. Yeah, because if you wouldn't have done what you did, it wouldn't have led me to where I'm at. Yeah. I literally just had this conversation with someone. I'm like, this is so crazy because right? it's yeah. so true. Now your healing process, what did that look like? So the healing process. Because you spoke about destroying everything. So it started there probably. So it started there. Well, that, that was the very first time I found out. That was the year into our marriage. Okay. So then I think every discovery, I just became more angry, more numb, more just con more controlling. Yeah. And then when, when we finalized or when I filed for divorce, after that, I thought I was fine. Yeah. I thought I was he already healed. It was just he was the issue. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really think I needed to do solo work because I've, like, I've been doing therapy with him for seven years. I'm and freaking tired. The only reason you're the way that you are is because of him. Yeah, like I, I, I'm controlling because he cheated so many times. I'm, you know, I can manipulate this because he did this. And so I had to like be the, uh, the cop or, and yeah. try to, the detective. So I am this, yeah, exactly. I am this way because of him. And so yeah. that's just kind of what I put it all on. And so then when I started dating again post-divorce, I was like, not only picking the same kind of men mm -hmm. who weren't honest when they, you know, I dated someone who was not honest with me in, from the get go. Yeah. And well, then what happens to me? I become controlling. I become manipulative. I become a version of myself that I was in my marriage because I can't trust someone. And so I just, again, mm. become this like really unhealthy version of me. And then I was like, the issue isn't the guy, the issue is me. Like, A, why am I picking people like this? What are the messages that I'm that I'm believing in myself to think that I deserve this? Mm. And why am I staying in it even when I know that someone's lied to me? So it was a massive deep dive. I went to onsite for the third time. I love, I'm like. I love onsite, but yeah. I was like, I've done the groups. I need to now sit in a room, one-on-one -on -one with a therapist for eight hours a day yep. and just like, figure out what's going on and what I realized was I always thought my ex-husband had all the shame because of all the bad the stuff that he did I was also carrying years of shame because I thought mm -hmm. I wasn't good enough or I thought I deserved abuse because of previous domestic abuse relationships and so carrying all that well of course I'm going to pick unhealthy people because I yeah. don't think I deserve anything better than that mm. and of course I'm gonna control because that's the only way that I have any control whatsoever in a situation or I can feel like I have some 
power or that I won't get hurt or yeah. whatever my rational thinking was. And so it was, it was painful. It was hard. I had to look in the mirror of things. I had to apologize to certain people too along the way that I hurt uh, because of my own holes inside of myself, my own destruction. Like mm -hmm. I just, you know, I just not, I don't want to say destroyed great people, but I, I hurt some really great people because of my own issues and brokenness. And so those were tough conversations. And wow. And how did you approach that? One of the people that I reached out to, I said, I've been wanting, cause it's true. Like I've been wanting to send this text for a long time. And there was, there was, was a, it someone that you had dated or that you had someone that I was romantically linked okay. to? Yeah. Uh, that I just did so wrong. Yeah. It was so just terrible. And, um, like cheated, like the whole thing yeah. and, um, not in a marriage. i did not cheat in my marriage. And so I reached out to him and, uh, I said, I'd love to have a conversation with you if you're open to it. And so he ended up coming over and, um, and I was just like, I don't want you to say anything. I don't want you to say, you forgive me. I don't want you to say it's okay. I don't want you to, I was like, I just need to say, I'm sorry. And I listed all the reasons, like things that I was sorry is I shouldn't have played with you like that, your heart like that. When I knew that he was kind of essentially a pawn and like me getting out of another relationship. Mm. Like it was just, I was like, I wanted to feel loved and I used you to make me feel that way. And that's really sick. And, uh, wow. And it was hard. And then he was like, it's okay. I'm like, no, please like, don't, I'm like, this is not, I do not want to be forgiven. And he's like, no, he's like, I'm sorry too. He's like, cause he's like, I also played my part in, in that as well. He's like, I knew that you were going through something and yeah, and he's like, I brought my stuff to it. And so I realized in that moment that two people can, you know, and again, he didn't have to say any of that, but that we all play a part in mm -hmm. a relationship and when things go wrong. Um, so whether it's, again, I was the more person at fault, but he still had a piece. And I thought that was, it was just a beautiful, I was like, wow, like, okay, even though I was more in the wrong for things, you can still own your, your stuff too. That's amazing. And that was huge. But it took a lot of time and work and to get yeah. to that place yeah <laughs> wow but that's... it's great because I also like now you know everyone's like well what's the difference between the relationship you're in now and I'm like oh he just respects me so much and I had this light bulb moment but you respect yourself well now I deserve I I, I now deserve respect like yeah. I know that now before I'm like I would never have thought I deserved someone like him or I wouldn't have even been attracted to that at mm -hmm. all I would have, I would have pushed him away so far and destroyed it on my own because that's what I would do. Anything that was good for me or healthy, I would destroy and ruin that person so they couldn't, but so do that you I think that hurt. came from your past well, yeah. of abuse yeah. and cause it, I know, I remember you spoke about it. I think the month that is for domestic abuse mm -hmm. and stuff like you spoke about it. So mm -hmm. it is something you've been open about. Yeah. And so that journey, when was that? So that was, well, I mean, the messages started, my father wasn't abusive, but I grew up in a very angry household. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of fighting that wasn't great fighting. Yeah. Um, so from there and the, the daddy kind of issues came in. I like was attracted then to the older men, but it was the, the aggressors, mm -hmm. which were the guys that I was mostly attracted to and the abusers. And so, but it was 19 is when I met my first abuser and mm. he was 20 plus years older than me. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but again, it was because I believed all the messages as a kid that I, I deserved that. I deserved abuse. I wasn't enough. Um, yeah. That was my, you know, um, my worth. So, you know, it makes sense. And, but it was, it was hard. One of the hardest chapters in the book was writing about, cause I don't talk about the domestic abuse piece a lot just yeah. because it's, I still have a little bit of shame around it. Uh, and in, in the book, mm. one of the chapters is I was talking about an incident where I was hiding in a bush cause the guy was trying to kill me. And I'm like, and I, when I was reading the audio part of that, I'm like, why are you hiding in a bush? Like, get out of it. Like, what are you doing? Like, I still have a little bit of like, why did you, why, why, why were you there? Like, I know why I was there and I've done all the work around it, but yeah. it's still, sometimes I'm a little, there's just shame around that. Now, like I you, wasn't strong enough to be like, 
I do not deserve this. But of course, I didn't think I deserved it because of all the years yeah. as in childhood and everything else. Yeah. Do so. you feel like there's part of you that when people, because I've said, even said myself, I've done a lot of work on just trauma that I endured as mm -hmm. a kid and going forward. And do you ever feel that there's part of you that's afraid to get to that 100% healing in fear of not knowing who you are without that? I totally hear what you're saying on that. Um, I think for me, it's, I don't, my work now is feeling like I deserve the peace and the safe place that I'm in now mm -hmm. because I'm still constantly waiting for the shoe to drop. I'm used to chaos. I'm used to like to the blow ups and the yeah. big fights and the, I mean, I used to get in my ex's face and just be like, you know, almost wanting the hit. Right. Um, mm. I don't want that anymore. I've like, I've resolved yeah. that piece of things, but that's just the constant work that you always said. I don't think I can't sit here and say I am fully healed. Everything is because there's something that came up the other day in therapy where I'm like, God, I've worked on this. Why is this still coming up? Like this is years. Like why? Like she's like, your, your body will always remember. And your, your body, body keeps, keeps the score. score. Yeah. Yep. And she's like, it's healing doesn't just stop. Like you will always be healing. You'll be growing. She's like, your response times will be less. And it's not as often anymore. But yeah, there's still moments where I have to check myself and go, okay, this is a very old pattern and I need to address it and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, either bring it back to therapy or, you know, handle it differently. So. And so what would you tell people who think that like, I'm already 30 years old or I'm already and like, I'm just never going to be healed and I'm never going to get to that place of happiness. And because I feel like maybe there was times for you to where you felt that way. For sure. I mean, I was in my bed bawling, going, no one's ever going to love me. I'm the common denominator. I'm the problem. I look at how many times I've been married and look at, um, you know, who's, who's going to, who's going to want this? Like I'm washed up. I'm X, Y, and Z. And that could have been a choice that I, that's, that could have been a narrative that I could have continued to believe in. Mm -hmm. But I also know why I've gone, why I did all those things. And there's going to be someone that will see that I'm not that same person that yeah. made those choices. And I have a choice to either stay in my old narrative or choose a new one and do better with a, with a new narrative. So mm. I think for me personally, happiness is a choice. I know it can be hard on like the mental health side of things like, but when it comes to choosing, okay, today I'm not gonna play the, oh, it's, I, I'm bad, I'm washed up or I don't deserve love. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm going to, I believe that I deserve love and I deserve those things. So I'm going to repeat it until I believe it. And I'm going to choose yeah. the new narrative because I don't want to be playing out this victim card or the, oh, it's all their fault or, or I'm the pro like, I just, where is that going to get me? Nowhere. It's not going to get me. Yeah, exactly. It's going to get me nowhere. So I'd rather choose the narrative that I want to believe. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would write it on my mirrors, sticky notes until I looked at it and go, you are enough. That was literally on site. Like what my yeah. word for the week was worthy. And it was just like telling yourself over and over again, like yeah. you are worthy. You're worthy mm -hmm. of the best. You're worthy of all these things. And sometimes you have to, it's like, I find myself posting things on social media, like these quotes. And it's like, I so badly want to believe them when you post them. And it's like, I hope everyone else believes these because mm -hmm. I don't believe it, but it's like, you're so badly wanting to believe it. Yeah. And sometimes you just need to like say it over and over until you do. Mm -hmm. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. You guys know I've spoken about BetterHelp before, and that's because I am a huge, huge, huge advocate for therapy. Our mental health should always come first. Really, ever since I was a child, I have struggled with my mental health. Every time I speak to my therapist, we talk about high-functioning depression, and that's what I struggle with, and that's why I need therapy to help deal with those different emotions and feelings. BetterHelp is amazing because it's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule 
schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Savannah. Once you went through that whole process of like your healing journey and then yeah. going back to dating, <laughs> how was that? So after onsite, here in a second. Oh, look at that. <laughs> no, look up. Look at the huh. word. It's yours. Not a coincidence, my friend. What? That's crazy. Chills. I haven't, you know, I haven't worn that in probably a couple years. And I went, I was like, I need a long necklace today. I literally, I'm like, that's okay. That's crazy. It literally says worthy on it. That's insane. A lot of mine say believe in enough. And for some reason I was like, oh, worthy. I was like, huh, it's yours. Wow. Weird. Wow. So many God moments. I'm like, that's insane. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. That's, I, yeah, that's, wow. I'm like in shock by that. I mean, yeah, I'm, that, that's what I was like, wait a minute. It's one of those moments like, that you're like, that's amazing. Yeah, and that's, and it's moments like that that I'm like, all right, God is there. Little God wings. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. It's, wow. That's insane. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. Gosh. Okay, well, and this is the giving keys, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so isn't the whole point of it is. Give the word to someone that needs it. Wow. That is such a God thing. Holy cow. And it's just weird because I literally have not worn that in like a couple years. Yeah. That's amazing. Crazy. I love that. Wow. You're amazing. I love Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No. So back to your dating. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm excited yeah, yeah, yeah. about this. Um, How was it? So after that experience, I was like, you know, I've never dated. I've always just hopped right into relationships and been like, okay, I need to mold this like perfect family. Like, and I just tried to force it all the time. And so I'm like, I promised myself and my guide at onsite that I would not get into a relationship for six months. And my friends were like, yeah, okay. And I was like, no, 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 I'm doing it. And I even lasted longer than that. Uh, and I just dated and had fun. I called it hot girl summer, not because I was like, you know, going off and sleeping with people, but yeah. it, was, it was just like a lot of dates. And I got to see what I liked, what I didn't like. And I got to go, you know what? Normally I had this one guy at my house and normally I would have stayed there and continued the date, (laughs) maybe done things that I didn't want to, but I felt bad. Yeah. Right. Cause they like flew in or something. And I was like, I need, I need you to, I, I'm I'm just not feeling this. Like I just, I, I, I want to be, and I was like, I want to be home alone. Right. Like I just, I didn't want anyone in my space. And so that was, I felt bad for that he was not happy, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm honoring what I wanted in my space. And so I realized- That had to have felt so It was incredible. And I like, I wanted to feel bad, but I didn't. I was just like, I really just want to be alone right now. Because he was like, you good? And I'm like, yeah. And I don't think you're going to like what I'm going to say. I just kind of want to be alone in my house right now. And I'm sorry. I know you flew here and just not feeling it. And I just want to be alone. No. I was like, I was like, God. And then I felt so bad though, because he hates me, but you know, I, I, (laughs) but I had to honor, I started honoring myself and honoring things that, you know, I would have never done before. Okay. So that was fun. What's, what's a funny story that you're like through the dating process that you're just like, well, I'll say this, (laughs) and this is not, you know, um, it isn't the funny, like the funniest story, but it's the don't X people when you, until you give them a, tr- a shot. Because okay. f- for example, my fiance, he DM'd me and I ignored it. Cause I'm like, he lives in England. Like, like you know, these other, and these other guys on Rye, they're like France and I, like uh, Australia. It's like all these places. I'm like, I'm a mom of two kids in Nashville, Tennessee. Like <laughs> what? Like, this is so silly. I could have easily just continued to ignore that DM. And I think, I wouldn't write people off just because of like get to know everybody yeah, and just try it all out. Cause you never know what could happen. So what made you respond? 
he so he like dm'd me and then i saw it and i was just like me i never like looked at yeah. his page or whatever i just kind of saw his little circle thing because he was private uh and then i was just like oh yeah thanks for reaching out um we said a few things back and forth and then he we exchanged numbers but he whatsapp me and i'm like i'm not on whatsapp yeah, so like, I'm like, I, I don't have whatsapp yes. or like the notifications so I kind of honestly forgot about him. <laughs> and then I looked at my WhatsApp, which was on like my fourth thing on my phone. And I saw some messages on there. I was like, who's WhatsApping me? And I was like, oh, it's this guy, coach or whatever from England. And then his messages were really sweet. So then I would respond back, but then I'd forget again because I don't have it on notifications. <laughs> and then like one night, like a couple months later, I actually did a deep dive and was like, oh, he's actually kind of cute. So I was like, I'm like, well, Dang it, I who knows? So I was like, I don't have the kids like this, you know, Christmas on. So maybe yeah. I could have a fun little getaway to England. And then I took, and a, I took a chance at love. And there was, it was that when you, um, did you post that you were in England, but you didn't post I did anyone? not post that I was no, so a man. No, he but, came to Nashville first though. I made okay. sure of that. I was like, I'm not flying all the way over there until like yeah. I meet you first. So he came there he came and then here you first. took a trip to England. England. Yeah. And how was it? It was honestly not great because oh, no. <laughs> he had the flu. <gasps> so he was miserable. Stop. So like I had, you know, and he was working I, we had fun together, but I could tell he was miserable. But at first I'm calling my best friend, Kristen, and I'm like, I don't really think he likes me, but it was because Stop. he had the flu and we didn't know this till the end of the trip. So he was like pale and sweating and like, just like, like trying to show me around London, like half dying. Stop. Yeah. So oh yeah. But the gosh. second London trip went amazing. <laughs> okay, <I'm laughs> so, glad second. London yeah. is like my favorite place. Yeah. I love it. It was fun. So when did you know? I knew when I met him in Nashville and I know that's like, sounds so cheesy. It's not, it is not. I knew the moment he turned around like a 1 million percent. And that next day I did a video going, I'm going to marry him. He's, he's my one. I told my girlfriends, I have it on like on my phone video, like time stamped everything. Stop. Yeah. That is my friends amazing. were like, wait, wait, what? And I was like, I know I sound ridiculous and my best friend I Catherine was like the same person yeah well, my best friend Catherine she's like guys listen she's like I, I you know I've known Jana now for 15 years she's like she's actually never she's married the guys but she's never actually said that this was the one <laughs> like it's just so she was like not even with Mike so she's like this does sound different and I'm like see I told you she married them but she never said no nope. they were the one never said they were the one no 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 that is amazing yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh I love that yeah that is awesome. Yeah. But yeah, no, we are very, we like, we love to love. That's so, how long were you dating before you got pregnant? Mm. <laughs> See, October. But, and that's the thing though, when you know, you five, know. Five, six months. Okay. Yeah. But like, that's, especially when you've gone through a lot of stuff, Yeah, you know, pretty much right off the bat, like if 1, this is going to be something or it's not. Yeah. Like I know within three just months, about everything. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can, I can weed out the flags within at least three months. Yeah. So then you guys got engaged, right? We, yes. So what is, cause obviously you probably have people that are like, Oh, you just got engaged because you're pregnant. Right. And what, like, what are your thoughts or his thoughts to that? So we talked, this is probably in February. We were in England and we're like, okay, what is a crystal ball plan? What do you, what, what does that look like to you? And he's like engaged in the summer, pregnant thereafter, again, with my age. Yeah. I was like, if we're going to try to get pregnant, it has to, and I don't want a shotgun wedding. I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> no. So the, the Christian piece has been hard because a lot of people were like, well, if you're a Christian, mm. then you should get married before. And I'm a bad influence to my daughter. And, and that's the tough. So I've had to walk that a little bit. Like yeah. I even had a little shame walking into church going, are people judging me because they know I'm not married? But I've had some, um, like Annie, Annie Downs and I had a great conversation. One of our campus pastors I talked to, to them about it. So that's been good. And what was the advice given to you on that? Jesus loves everyone and just a different plan. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's awesome. And I told my daughter too, because she goes, when I told my daughter I was pregnant, she's like, but you're not married. And I was like, because she thinks when you get married, you just have a baby. Yeah. So I was like, 
Hmm. Yes. I was like, well, I was like, God just blessed us early. So that's awesome. Yeah. But, um, for me, it was one of those things where I had to wrap my mind around the fact that w the dream of what I always wanted was to get married, have a baby, mm -hmm. have a, you know, have the family, the whole thing. I don't, I wouldn't have had that luxury in the time period that we wanted, given that I don't want to be 40 plus personally for me. Yeah. Given just, the history of exactly. everything that um, I've gone through with pregnancies. So that was, that was actually the hardest piece to swallow because I'm like the only man I've ever actually wanted to walk down the aisle to, I can't go in the order that like I dreamt as a little girl. Mm -hmm. So that was tough because I would have loved that. Uh, so we just, we kind of set a month for starting to try and it happened. Obviously we didn't think it would happen the first month. So it wasn't an engaged because I was pregnant. It was going to be around the same time anyways. Yeah. So we just, we, yeah, we announced the engagement first cause that just sat a little better for me, yes. but <laughs> that sat a little better. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I was like, how do we do the, you know, the team call. I'm like, no, I right, guess here's the problem. <laughs> I was like, yeah. we're engaged, but we're also pregnant. How do we do this? So that's what, yeah. but, and that's the thing. It's like, it's kind of like that saying when you like plan out your life or you have this timeline, like God laughs at you. Yeah. Oh, do you want to know what I want to do for my 40th birthday? I wanted a private island, like fireworks, dance party, all the besties. Like, I mean, a big old, yeah. I have been planning my 40th blowout <laughs> since I turned 30. Like it has been like, <laughs> my due date is on my 40th birthday. No, it is not. I laughed out loud I, in my doctor's, like in the doctor's <laughs> office when they told me my due date. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, I was like, are Stop. you kidding me? So no. that's where I always go. God always had the plan. That is that hilarious. He, he's like, I will be in diapers okay, on well, my 40. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can do it like a month later. Well, no, no, no. I'm like a bit like I am the girl that has to have the 40th, like on my 40th. So my C-section is two weeks actually prior Okay. to uh, my 40th. And we're going to do a murder mystery 40th themed. Stop. That's yeah. hilarious. Two weeks post. So I'll be postpartum that's like. Well, that, that'll be an interesting birthday. Yeah, yeah I'm pumped up. <laughs> but it's just, it's beautiful. It's like, you know, those are, again, the little winks that I just go, all right, you you, you are the planner of it all. So That's amazing. So mm. now wedding, have you guys spoken about like, are you in wedding planning pr mode or just baby mode? We're in both, but we're going to keep it so small mm -hmm. next year. Okay. Like so, 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 so small. Really? Yeah. So why do you, did you contemplate big wedding, little wedding? For me, I just want the, the people that I would like just immediate like family yeah. and then like two of my girlfriends. That's awesome. Yeah. Where it's just, uh, well, first of all, weddings are really expensive. And we they just moved are. into a new house, but I just, I, but I still want the, you still the white want. dress and the walk and the photo with me and the kids and our baby. Like, that's just like the image that I just can't keep. I can't get over because yeah. the silver lining of the Coming last full circle. tens plus years of just all that stuff, like to have that, that image and that, ex and I want the wedding for my, for my kids. Like yeah. Jolie wants this whole castle wedding. So we're, we're meeting in the middle. Oh gosh. In Scotland. Maybe. So. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Little kilts for that the boys. That gives me like you know? goosebumps. So. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. So what would you say to people that like you were in a place where you could have easily written off love? Yeah. Like I'm done. There is no hope for me. I'm just going to have to settle for someone. What revived like that excitement in you? It was until I really truly loved my I know it's so cheesy but as I loved myself yeah. that I that I all the other stuff started to fall into place mm -hmm. and the settling aspect is I've settled before because I wanted kids because I wanted I felt like I was getting older and I believe in that there is that perfect person out there for you um you just have to believe it too and then also yeah, just the, to love yourself to, you know, and I put things in the next chapter as well, the things that had helped me get to that place. But 
when you can do that and when you can really believe that is when the pieces start to come together. And I want that for everybody. Like I don't want anyone, like there's people that are like, oh, I, I'm just never, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, you can, you can have, again, you can choose that yeah, or you can choose differently. Well, and too, when you meet the right person, mm-hmm. you just know. It's like that yeah. quote that says, like someone can make you feel more in two months right. than someone did in 10 years. Yeah. I mean, I've never gotten, I've never felt this kind of love, but again, it's because I now there's a different, um, there's a different, uh, level of, uh, like respect that I know and the love that I know that I deserve. So what I'm getting is more than I ever thought I could ever have, but I also know that's what I deserve. Yeah. Well, even just the fact that like he walked in here with you and and he's like, I'm going to walk you there. I'm like, you don't have to You go to your (laughs) whatever that and like yeah, that was the sweetest thing i was like yeah. oh my gosh yeah he's a he's a he's a true like gentleman that's amazing yeah. i love you I, that makes me so excited for you Thank because you. especially from it's not like we've like stayed in contact over the years like yeah. friends friends but like watching you too just from being at the very beginning and like being at the all time low and yeah. now being at a place to where it's like, it all makes sense. Well, and same girl too. Like it's, it's been fun to watch your growth, your journey too. And it's, um, you've just blossomed into this beautiful <laughs> young, Thank lo- you. young lady. So, okay. Yeah. So when is your book being released? October 24th. October 24th. Yes. The okay. next chapter. I'm so excited for that. Yeah. October and I just hope 24th. people know that they're not alone in their struggles and that uh, we all have we all have to look in the mirror and sometimes, you know, we have to work on ourselves but also tell ourselves things to get us going. And I think that, going. like, that was the biggest thing. Like, you didn't sit here and just place blame on everyone else. The amount of, like, accountability you took, that's when you know someone's really had a lot of growth. Because we all get to where we get to with two people. Yeah. It doesn't just take one. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you're able to say, no, I made mistakes. Mm-hmm. I did this. I did that. And mm-hmm. that's what the world needs more of. Mm-hmm. Instead of just constantly blame, blame, blame. Like, let's look at ourselves a little bit. A little ownership goes yeah. a long way, I think. For sure. And then also just, I don't want to, like, I don't want to hate. Even, you know, this, this one person I ran into that again, it wasn't honest with me, but I, I, you know, I would have said hello. They just want to just be like, Oh, she, I'm the problem or whatever. Yeah. But I, I don't like that energy. So I'm no. like, okay, that's your choice yeah. that you don't want to say hello, but I'm not going to like, I'd rather be like, hi, how are you? You know what I mean? Like, I just, it's not a fake thing. I just don't like, I don't want any negative. I don't want hate for anybody. Mm-hmm. It's just too, life's too short to have it any really of that is. like animosity or hatred or just the heaviness. I don't want to feel that. Yeah, 100%. And too, like you said, life's too short. So do you really want the last moments with someone to be something negative? Exactly. No, I don't. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Your book, the next chapter, comes out October 24th. Thanks. I'm so excited. And where can people be everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. And then, um, yeah, Wind On Podcast. We have a podcast. And then, um, yeah. I'm so excited for you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you.